Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you very much for joining me for yet another segment of Weather Center Nazario. We're not going to do any fancy intro today. We're not even going to do an outro, really. I just want to jump right into this because we've had some very interesting developments as we've gone throughout most of the morning and into this afternoon where I'm speaking to you right now. And development is the name of the game today. We have been watching a system highlighted by National Hurricane Center out in the Gulf of Mexico. If you've watched the last few segments of Weather Center Nazario back before we hit the mid portions of the weekend, since I didn't put out a video yesterday, we'd been discussing how this is likely to not form into anything substantial at all. It was breakaway vorticity left over from what spun up Ophelia last week and a bit of a combination of frontal energy as well that was still situated across the Gulf of Mexico, parts of the Florida Peninsula, and worked its way off to the west to form an upper low poleward of where our jet stream is currently running. What I have here is the True Color Infrared Satellite. You can see that we have open cell cumulus running to the north down across the southern base of this upper low spinning over the Yucatan Peninsula, and that is a clear indication that we have jet energy wrapped up in this system at three to 200 millibars. As a result, this is once again all upper level induced, or what I mean by that is this is only an upper level feature. We have not seen a reflection of this circulation all the way down to ground level for us to see any substantial noticeable phenomena with it. It has been driving a lot of moisture into the Florida Peninsula, the Bahamas, and parts of Cuba for the last several days ever since Ophelia finally made landfall and kind of left that stationary tail of frontal energy in her wake. At this point in time, National Hurricane Center has discontinued any chances of this becoming any sort of a disturbance, let alone a named system, although they did have it highlighted at a 10% chance. I'm a little astonished that they once again kind of highlighted this feature willy-nilly the way that they did. They're getting a little trigger happy with these upper level circulations. I do understand we could get some frontal energy spinning up a tropical entity. However, it was pretty clear looking at every slice of the atmosphere that a lot of us could, this wasn't going to develop into anything concerning. And with the introduction of a trough off to the west currently, as well as our next frontal system coming through the southeast, this upcoming weekend, it was likely to be sheared apart and pretty much erased from the big picture pattern altogether within 48 hours of it spawning in. Where I want us to pay close attention is this very aggressive tropical wave over the Central Caribbean working its way off to the west. We had an area of vorticity work its way off of the Panama coast, kind of shooting itself out of the Pacific monsoonal trough due north into the Southern Caribbean. It has finally worked its way far enough to the north to influence the weather phenomena with this tropical wave highlighted by National Hurricane Center. What's also very curious about this is the fact that we have a very broad area of anticyclonic circulation just behind it at 200 millibars, which is a feature you do want to see if you're looking to instigate a little bit of tropical development. And I think the combination of vorticity in that anticyclone at 200 millibars is exactly why we're seeing such tremendous thunderstorm activity ignite during the day today. Another reason we're fixating on this satellite chart is because number one, the GFS has been hammering at us that we could possibly see central, if not western Caribbean development of something, whether it be a tropical depression, a tropical disturbance in of itself, let alone a named storm, it's been instigating some level of development out there for the last several days now. It's been a little on and off in terms of its intensity, its depiction of where it could possibly track. Get over to windy.com because I want to show you the particular scenario that this system has found itself in as of this afternoon. Just out ahead of it, we have our upper level low supported by the jet at 300 and 200 millibars, just downstream of where it sits. Right now, it's dumping copious amounts of rains across across Jamaica, and unfortunately they're battling heavy flood conditions, landslides, and mudslides as we speak, which is unfortunately exactly what typically comes of a situation like this, especially with such aggressive thunderstorm activity blossoming since we got from sunrise this morning up until now. We're only at the middle part of the day today, and it looks like these thunderstorms are going to continue to rain themselves out at least for another 6 to 8, maybe even 12 hours, depending on how much forward progress this wave can make as that anti-cyclone tries to situate itself back behind it. Now you can see some clear clock clockwise turning in the winds at 250 millibars just behind it. And the reason I bring this up is this is a very, very tiny window of either developmental possibilities or completely sheared apart probabilities. And by that, what I mean is if it moves too far downstream in a very quick manner, it's going to run right into our upper level low with that tremendous amount of upper level shear wrapped around its vortex. And that's going to, for all intents and purposes, diminish any remote chance that this could become anything more than just the tropical wave producing large amounts of rainfall. If it decides to hang out and situate itself where it's been parked for most of the day today, and we allow that anti-cyclone to come on in, move our low height center a little further 
further downstream into the Bay of Campeche, closer to the Mexico City area, then we could start to see a little bit more development with this storm. I'm not calling anything confirmed right now. National Hurricane Center doesn't have it highlighted. And as of right now, from what I've seen in the bits of research I've done on and off from YouTube, from social media, from mainstream media platforms, no one's really discussing this. And it's very interesting. A lot of people are still fixated on what's happening in the Gulf of Mexico, but National Hurricane Center has since significantly backed off on any probability that that's going to be our next system or something, let alone we need to monitor. Alrighty, everyone, I know we're doing this all sorts of raw right now, but what I'm going to do is show you exactly how we got here. We're at 500 millibars on the GFS. This is our most recent run, and we are actually 72 hours in the past right now, so we're back on Friday at 12 Zulu. I want you to pay close attention to what happens down here nearest to Central America, particularly parts of Colombia and Panama. As we go through time, you can see that we do get quite a bit of vorticity forming up along the Pacific Monsoon Trough, likely developing some Tremendous thunderstorm activity for the likes of Panama and interior Colombia, something we typically see down there during this time of year. And if you watch closely, you can see a large segment of this vorticity begins to break away and work its way into the Caribbean. And that's exactly what's trying to help instigate a little bit more upward vertical motion with our tropical wave, really ignite those thunderstorms as powerfully as it has in combination to our upper level anti-cyclone just back behind it. But what's interesting with the 12Z run is it shows no further consolidation. It tries to spin up into a surface-based low once you get right up against the Yucatan Peninsula, but then it continues off to the west, washes itself out in the Bay of Campeche, and becomes nothing more than a rainmaker for parts of central Mexico. This can very well happen. As I mentioned on the slide prior to this, if it runs out in front of itself or tries to topple forward with forward momentum, it's going to run right into our upper level trough, upper level low, and all that high level of 200 to 300 millibar winds, and that's going to continue to shear this system off to the northeast. It'll remain very elongated. It won't get any kind of cyclonic curvature with it, and it'll just dump rain and continue off on a westward track, kind of following in close pursuit of that low center of circulation. If it can hang out for just a little bit longer and kind of get its act together, and that anti-cyclone can situate itself right overhead and allow some outflow and exhaust to start from where its axis is situated currently, we could see a little bit of spinach with it, just a little bit. And I'll take you over to the icon here in a second and show you what the icon is thinking as of today. Given the circumstances and its current source region, if you will, source region, which would be the Central Caribbean, I can see why the models are having such a hard time developing it, not developing it, developing it, and not developing it. This is our 12Z icon model now, the German model, and if you pay close attention to right in this general area, you begin to see a little bit of a deepening trend with the system, albeit very scarce. We're only starting to get a little bit of a closed center of circulation, albeit very broad. As you go through time here, you can see that there is a bit of increased wind speeds as you get closer to the Yucatan Peninsula. And then there you can see very closely, if you look in the wind barbs, there is that cyclonic curvature beginning to take shape right in through here. That would be just about 33 hours from where we sit right now. This would be if it moved a little bit slower than what the GFS is anticipating. As you go forward in time, you can see that this low kind of does exactly what Idalia did. It situates itself right off the eastern coastline of the Yucatan and sort of feeds off of those hot surface waters. It doesn't develop into anything significant, but what's concerning, and I say concerning loosely, nothing's highlighted yet, nothing's concrete, and there's still a lot of discontinuity between models. But as you go through time, you see we have a closed low center that exits into the Gulf of Mexico and starts to butt up against our upcoming frontal system that's supposed to make its way all the way through the southeast into the Gulf of Mexico by this time next week, if not even before that, before we hit the fateful October 1st. You can see the clear turning in the winds, a cyclonic center of circulation parked just off the west coast of Florida. The Euro model last night at 0Z indicated this as well towards the back end of its run. The GFS also hinted at something butting up against that cold frontal boundary as it comes south and washing out or potentially ejecting off almost due east across the southern periphery of Florida and then finally developing in the Bahamas. All of these are likely scenarios if we can get something to come out of this tropical wave. Right now we have nothing more than a complex of really tremendous thunderstorm activity and I'm simply trying to bring awareness to this because some of our models over the last five to seven days have highlighted the possibility we could see something tropical in nature develop in the central to western Caribbean and push into the Gulf. We'll 
will come quickly over to our 12Z ensembles with the GFS, and you can see that, albeit very weak, we do have some areas of lowering pressure as we get into next weekend. This is Friday at 6Z, something moving into the Tampa area, and then something back behind it moving a little bit slower, entering the Gulf of Mexico once we get into the late evening hours of Friday, Zero Zulu on Saturday. Again, very weak, very disorganized, not calling for anything substantial. Maybe one member indicating we could see a tropical storm try to form off the west coast of Florida. But again, lots of discrepancy with the models, and I can understand why we're in such a very bizarre area of potential development or potential eradication destroying of this system because it's in close proximity to a very favorable upper level feature and a very unfavorable upper level feature. Again, it's kind of walking a tightrope right now. If it goes too far west, you're going to run right into that upper low and it's going to be ripped to shreds. If it can hang back and kind of situate itself over the Central Caribbean and unfortunately, dare I say it, continue to rain across parts of Cuba and especially Jamaica, who really doesn't need any more rain at this point, it will start to get a little bit more nourishment and upward vertical motion, not only from the vorticity that broke off of Central America, but the anti-cyclone that's trying to park itself right over top and provide that very uppermost exhaust feature that we see with a lot of tropical cyclones. Before we wrap up, I'm going to take you through all the different ingredients we had come together within the last 24 hours. This is now back in time again. We're at 0Z on Saturday. You go through the European models loop and you can see a tremendous surge of good moisture content coming out of Central America and off of South America for that matter, right in this general area where our source region is predicted to be. So we have great moisture content. Dry air isn't a huge issue as of yet for this system. I wanted to bring up our shear chart as well and do a bit of initialization and comparison basically between the Euro and the GFS. And I can tell you right now, the Euro is actually not doing as well as the GFS. So if you look down over the eastern and central portions of the Caribbean, this is our 12Z valid time for today, Monday the 25th. You can see where our anti-cyclone is. However, it's a lot weaker, smaller, and doesn't have nearly as much upward vertical motion or spreading of the air at the upper levels of the atmosphere until you get into hump day this week, Wednesday at 12 Zulu, we finally get a very concentrated anti-cyclone situated right overhead where that tropical wave currently is. If we switch to the GFS and you scroll through time, you can see that they start at about the same position, a little downstream of where windy.com indicated most of our streamlines and the center of that anti-cyclonic circulation is. But as early as tonight into tomorrow, you can see a surging of our ridge, our high height center to the north across parts of the Bahamas and into Florida as a result of the jet energy rounding the base of our upper level low little breakaway trough that's over the Gulf of Mexico. This, I believe, a little bit more than what the Euro was calling for because of the interaction between our jet energy. And you can see as we go through the day on Tuesday, look at how broad of an anti-cyclone we have across the Caribbean, diminishing a lot of that heavy shear that could erode this system, at least for the next 36 to 48 hours. As you get into the day on Thursday and into Friday, you see that we have a breakaway piece of jet energy across Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, moving off to the west that's going to help clear our high height center out and create a very, very hostile environment for further development, especially especially across the Gulf of Mexico with the introduction of our next trough and cold frontal boundary. So all in all, guys, before we close out, I know this was a very unedited segment of Weather Center Nazario. Thank you for all of you who have tuned in. I will see you later this evening for my 8 p.m. tropics talk. In the interim, I will make sure to update you guys on the rest of the tropics because we've had some interesting phenomena starting to take place with Philippe and potential future Rena just upstream of him. A lot of our models, especially the Euro, want to trend it further to the west and and we could either see a very rough amalgamation of Philippe moving to the north of our Caribbean islands towards the Bahamas, or if he can manage to hold on to a little bit of intensity, we could see Tropical Depression Philippe moving towards the Bahamas as well as Rena kind of in close proximity in his wake. She is anticipated to turn to the north and become the stronger system, at least for most of our deterministic models. We still have a lot of time to get ahead of that as it is only a disturbance and invest area right now. But trust me, I'm watching everything. This has been my area of investigation and looking once again at infrared satellite, that area is looking pretty gnarly. No closed center, no turning in the winds just yet, but we have different parameters coming together that would suggest we could see tropical development, especially when you go back to what we've seen in terms of OHC, ocean heat content, and the sea surface temps that everyone's been talking about religiously out in the Caribbean and eventually into the Gulf of Mexico. So Lord willing, all eyes remain on this disturbance, this wave, whatever you want to call it right now. There is not a general consensus, something 
will develop out of it, but it's definitely worth investigating at least for another day or two. We'll see if this thunderstorm activity can hold together. If it parks itself beneath that anti-cyclone and can get a little further consolidation with it, or if it just rains itself out post sundown and moves off to the west and becomes nothing more than a remnant entity. The point is we've seen a couple of indications that this could possibly pan out. So now we're playing that waiting game again, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We're going to end the video here. Please like, share, and subscribe if you're brand new to the channel. I look forward to seeing you tonight at 8 p.m. for our evening tropics talk. See you guys soon. This is Weather Center Nazario signing out.